A shocking weather pattern is developing across the United States, which is about to bring even more extremely cold weather for the month of August and September across much of the United States, with more record-breaking low temperatures being a possibility. This also has big implications on hurricane season, severe weather, and even winter. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today and right now across the southeast. East, you can actually see the remnants of our cold front. This is the first of many that are going to be coming over the next couple of weeks. This is what just brought a big shot of cold air to areas like the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and back into the Northeast. But for those along the Gulf Coast and also across the Southeast, we are dealing with on and off showers and thunderstorms, and there is even a potential for some significant flooding from North Texas all the way back into Southern Louisiana this afternoon and evening. So be ready for that. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. Back over in the Southwest, high pressure pressure is dominating across the four corner states, which continues to pull moisture out of the Pacific, which has led to basically monsoon season continuing here across the four corner states, and this really isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Now, the biggest story for the next couple of weeks is the cold weather that is continuing to already dominate across much of the lower 48, but even more intense shots of cold air are coming, which are likely going to bring even more record-breaking low temperatures. So let's begin with what is happening right now in our mid-level flow and our jet stream. This what it looks like right now. We got very strong northwesterly flow that is currently coming out of Canada. This is allowing for cold weather to basically usher in from Canada into the lower 48. Large low pressure system is sitting right now in far northern New England and also in Canada. And then high pressure is currently sitting in western parts of Texas and southeastern New Mexico. And then as we go into September, things get a lot more interesting. That is because we are going to continue to see northwesterly flow coming right out of Canada. And we have one trough that's going to continue to basically sit back over over in the northeast but look at this right here back up in Canada we got another low pressure system that is ready to basically barrel down on the lower 48 which is going to bring an even more intense shot of cold weather to areas like the Midwest and the Ohio Valley now if this were winter this would almost undoubtedly bring a winter storm and very frigid weather now we are obviously in the beginning of September so you can only expect so much when it comes to a cold blast like this but we are almost undoubtedly going to see very cold temperatures we could see 30s and 40s across the board and areas like Minnesota and Wisconsin, making it one of the coldest time frames that we've seen in several months for some of these areas. As we get closer to the end of the week, this low pressure system will be growing in size. Very cold weather is going to reach down to the Ohio Valley, might even make it down to the southeast as well. There could be some isolated severe weather associated with this back over in the Ohio Valley during the middle and end of the week. Another thing I'd be keeping an eye on on the backside of this low pressure system is that we could see, one, some isolated snow flurries back over in northern Minnesota. That's something we cannot rule out with something like this. Additionally, there could be some water spouts back over in the Great Lakes during the first week of September, as a lot of cold air is going to be sitting over very warm water temperatures. So that's something to keep an eye on. And then as we go into the second week of September, things get more uncertain. So just to give you an idea of how intense this cold weather is about to get, these are the temperature anomalies over the last couple of days. This isn't really that crazy. I mean, we have a small pocket of well below average temperatures back over in New York, Pennsylvania, and even back over in Vermont. But what's going to be a lot crazier is as we go into the beginning of next week look at this up here we got very dark blue colors back up into Canada it gets way more intense though by Wednesday and Thursday we're going to start to see some pinks and purples here on the temperature anomalies which means extremely cold weather is coming to areas like the Midwest and the Ohio Valley by Wednesday and Thursday of next week temperatures are expected to drop once again into the 30s and 40s for low temperatures high temperatures may not even make it out of the 50s and 60s in a lot of these areas giving you guys the basically fake feeling of fall that's what essentially what this is going to be. And then eventually, as we go into next weekend, there could be another reinforcement of cold weather right behind that for those in the Midwest and across the Great Lakes, which means that this cold weather is likely going to be lingering for several days. It'll begin as early as Tuesday and Wednesday and could go as late as Sunday and Monday of next week. So get ready for some very cold weather here across much of the United States. Now, these are the temperatures that we are expecting over the next several days, beginning with today back over in the Northeast. We are talking about high temperatures temperatures only making it into the 60s for most areas even back over in Texas Arkansas we have a lot of showers and storms out there many areas like Oklahoma City all the way back into southern Mississippi might not make it out of the 80s or even 70s today for that matter as we go to Saturday and Sunday temperatures will not really change a whole lot we're talking about basically the same thing every day if you're back over in the Midwest Ohio Valley or the Northeast high low temperatures will be in the 40s and 50s for the most part back in the south and also in the southeast we're talking about 60s and 70s high temperatures 80s and 90s across 
across the central and southern plains in the southeast and 70s for the most part from the Midwest back into the northeast. Where things really change, though, as we just alluded to, is around Wednesday, we are expecting low temperatures to fall into the 40s and 30s across areas like Minnesota and North Dakota and northern Wisconsin by Wednesday. Thursday will likely be the coldest day of the week. We will see many areas drop into the mid to upper 30s. Some areas could get near freezing temperatures. That is, again, very rare for the beginning of September. I know this might feel normal to you. It, it's not something that we've never seen before, but this is not something we see hardly ever at the beginning of September. I also want to point out that back over in areas like Indianapolis and even back over near Cleveland, Ohio, we are currently dealing with one of the coldest stretches of weather that we've had in the month of August in over 30 years, including Indianapolis. This is some of the coldest weather that we've dealt with recently in the beginning of September is really not going to be much different. High temperatures on Thursday of next week will likely still be in the 60s for most of the Midwest, but look at this in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We might not make it out of the 40s, which is absolutely insane for the beginning of September. On Friday, we're dealing with even colder weather across the Great Lakes region in the Ohio Valley, and then by Saturday into Sunday, that cold weather is just going to continue across the Midwest. I mean, again, we could even have by Sunday of next weekend, 30s and 40s across northern Wisconsin and northeastern Minnesota. If you see these blues here, that does indicate freezing or below freezing temperatures. So there will be areas, I think, that will deal with their first freeze of the season, and we are only in the first week of September. Speaking of freezing temperatures, we are going to have our first winter forecast of the entire year on this channel in probably about a couple of weeks. So just a heads up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel for that. We're going to be talking about what I expect for winter. I do want to point out that our feel like temperatures as we go into Thursday of next week are likely going to be in the 30s and 20s across most of Minnesota, including the Twin Cities back through Milwaukee. And then as we go into Friday and Saturday, those temperatures will not really change a whole lot. We're still dealing with very cold weather and the feel like temperatures, which factors in the wind will likely continue to be in the 30s and 40s for most mornings, anywhere from Wednesday all the way through Sunday and Monday for most of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and perhaps even parts of Michigan. And the Climate Prediction Center does agree that we are experiencing, again, one of the coldest stretches that we've really seen in quite some time for the month of August. The last time we had a stretch of weather like this in the month of August or September was back in 2014. And if you don't know what happened in 2014 with hurricane season, we only had one tropical storm or hurricane go up the East Coast, and that was it. There was nothing else in the Atlantic Ocean. I honestly wouldn't be surprised with all these cold blasts that are currently happening that if this were to continue all the way through the rest of September, which is not likely, but if it were to continue, we would continue to see these strong cold fronts moving across the country and basically pushing anything tropical away from the country. Let's hope that continues. I don't know if it will. Obviously, it's too hard to tell weeks in advance, but this is definitely a promising sign for at least the foreseeable future that the tropics are going to stay quiet. Now, on the other hand, obviously, below average temperatures are expected for most areas near and east of the Rockies, back into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and all up and down the East Coast during the first week of September. Now, moving on from the temperatures, let's talk more about the future radar over the next week or two, beginning with what's happening today and tomorrow. I do want to caution for those that are back over in the southeast and also back into the central and southern plains. There will be heavy rainfall that could lead to some localized th flooding throughout the day today and also into tomorrow morning. So be ready for that. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. As we go to Sunday and Monday, showers and storms will continue across the Great Plains. No organized risk of severe weather is in the forecast. By Wednesday and Thursday, that's when an intense low pressure system will be sitting just north of the Great Lakes. This could lead to some sporadic severe weather across the Midwest as we go into Wednesday. Not looking at anything too significant, just isolated wind and hail, perhaps a very low risk of a tornado. And then as we go into Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of next weekend, high pressure continues to dominate. There's really not much in the way right now of significant severe weather, hurricanes, or really anything like that, at least for the foreseeable future across the lower 48. Now, there will be a risk of isolated severe weather and also flooding over the next 24 hours across the southern plains. I really think Louisiana and also East Texas are going to be hit hard today by a lot of showers and thunderstorms. There's also going to be some isolated severe weather in the Texas Panhandle later this afternoon into the early evening hours, primarily between 5 and 10 o'clock. Be ready for isolated damaging winds and hail. Showers and storms will continue tomorrow again across the southern plains. One of the biggest concerns is the threat of flooding. There will likely be a large area that will experience at least two to four inches of rainfall from East Texas back into Southern Mississippi. But another thing that I'm concerned about is that there should be a lot of localized areas today and into early tomorrow that pick up as much as seven to eight inches of rainfall back over in central Louisiana and far Eastern Texas. So if you're on the roadways, turn around, don't drown. And as we come to a close in August, we only have one area of development across the entire Atlantic Ocean right now. That is all the way back over near Africa. This could be something to watch for 
for in about 10 days or so back over near the Lesser Antilles or even in the United States. But as of now, it is way too far to the east to have any concern about. Just something to keep an eye on here over the next week or two. Otherwise, the tropics are very, very quiet. There could be a brief system that tries to develop going up the east coast over the next few days as well. But I do not think we're going to see anything tropical if anything were to form there. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video will likely be on Sunday or Monday, so click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates, and we'll see you guys all again in the next video.